So this presentation is about the structure of a neuron. And once you understand the structure of the neuron, you can see how a couple neurons interact with each other for a reflex arc. Neurons are the basic units of structure and function for the whole nervous system. They're the cells that make up the nervous tissue and the nervous tissue makes up the nerves and the brain and all that. Um, neurons are specialized cells. They conduct information from one part of the body to another. So within the nervous system, there's multiple different types of neurons. No one's gonna argue that point, but most of them have certain characteristics that are in common with each other. Uh, one of those characteristics is the soma, and that is here, this part here. It's the cell body. That part has all the normal cell parts. It has mitochondria and ribosomes and a nucleus and all the things that you typically associate with a cell. The next part are the dendrites, and those are all these little branchy tree-looking things here. Um, these dendrites are the input region. The next part that we're going to talk about is the axon. And so coming out of the cell body, going to the end of the neuron is the axon. And then finally, the last part are the axon terminals, these portions here. And that's where they communicate with the dendrites of the next neuron. So now we're going to take a look at the specific parts that neurons have in common that are unique to neurons. The first one we're going to look at are dendrites. And dendrites are thin branch processes. Their main function is to receive signals from other incoming neurons. They effectively increase the surface area of a neuron because they're so branched and spread out. And that increases the neuron's ability to communicate with other neurons. So instead of one neuron talking to another neuron, those dendrites allow the neuron to receive signal signals from hundreds of other neurons. As a result of the incoming signal, they're going to convey that information towards the cell body, the soma, through the use of graded potentials. Um, graded potentials are similar to action potentials, and we'll talk more about that in the next presentation. This is an electron micrograph, so basically it's a picture taken from um, a neuron being looked at under a very strong, powerful microscope. Um, what we're seeing here is the cell body here in the middle. So this whole part, here's the cell body. Coming out of it, we have the axon, and here, these are all branches that will lead to dendrites. Um, inside that cell body, we have uh, a nucleus, which is right here, and then there's going to be other cellular organelles. All that stuff you learned in biology about cells all applies right here to this cell body or soma. After the signal passes from the cell body, it moves on to the axon. Axons are surrounded by myelin sheath. Myelin sheath is a wrapping of fats or lipids. Um, it does two things for the, the neuron. It's gonna protect the axon and it's gonna uh, insulate it. Just like electrical wires, we have plastic covering the metal wire um, to keep the signal inside. The myelin sheath is gonna do that for the neuron. It also is gonna increase the rate of the action potential transmission. So it's gonna make the signal move through the neuron faster, which can be ideal, especially when you're talking about reflexes, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, but you need those reflexes to be pretty quick. And so if we can make the speed of that action potential faster, then that signal will be sent from, from the receptors to your spinal cord or brain and then back to the effector so much faster. And again, we'll talk about these things a little more in depth when we start talking about action potentials in the next presentation. Um, the wrapping of the axon, the myelin sheath, it's never complete. There's always gonna be gaps in the axon um, covering. And so we call these gaps nodes, um, or nodes are really just short for nodes of Ron VA, uh, because Ron VA is the one that figured it out. Uh, at the nodes, ions can flow across the, the membrane, and this is going to allow for the nerve signal to be sent. This is going to allow for the action potential. Again, we're going to talk more about that in the next presentation. Right now, we're talking about structure. The action potential is the function of a neuron. At the end of an axon, the axon is going to branch. Those branches form the axon terminals, or the endings of the axon. This is where the electrical signal that has been sent all from the dendrites through the cell body and down the axon is gonna get transferred to a chemical signal. 
Again, we'll talk more about that when we talk about action potentials. Um, here in the axon terminals, synaptic vesicles are stored. Uh, those synaptic vesicles are going to store neurotransmitters. And so when, they, when that signal gets converted from electrical to chemical, those synaptic vessels, which we can see right here, these vesicles here, will fuse with the cell membrane. You can see one's fused here and release its contents out of the axon terminal and into the synapse, which is the gap between um, the dendrites of one neuron and the axon terminal of another. Those neurotransmitters that get released go and stimulate the dendrites on the next neuron, sending the signal down the chain. So neurons send those signals really fast. And one of the ways we can measure that is by looking at a reflex arc. A reflex arc is a neural pathway and it mediates a reflex action. So a reflex is a rapid and predictable and involuntary response to stimuli. Uh, a reflex arc is a direct route from a sensory neuron to an inner neuron to a motor neuron. And we talked about this previously. So here we have a receptor. There's neurons in the skin that are gonna sense that there's a pin stuck into the skin. That's gonna send information down the sensory neuron when it gets to the spinal cord the sensory neuron is going to send the signal to the inner neuron which is going to interpret the signal once it interprets the signal it makes a decision of what to do and sends that information down a motor neuron once we reach the end of the motor neuron it should be at an effector a lot of times effectors are muscles for instance if you put your hand down on something hot and you pull it away, the muscles that pull your hand away are the effector. In this instance where we have the pin stuck in the skin, the effector again would be muscles to pull the pin out. Reflexes are pretty unique in that most of the time they don't even make it all the way up to the brain. The reaction takes place in the spinal cord. The spinal cord makes the decision of what's going to happen next, what effector to signal. This allows the reflex action to occur quickly um, because it activates spinal motor neurons without delaying that signal because it would have to travel up the spinal cord to the brain, have the brain interpret it, send it back down the spinal cord. So basically by having these reflex arcs making the determination of what should happen in the spinal cord, we're saving a lot of time. And typically that's going to be beneficial, um, especially like I said, when you put your hand down on something hot and you pull it away, the longer you leave it there, the more pain you're going to be in and the more likely you are to suffer a burn. Um, the brain is still going to receive sensory input from a reflex arc, but the action of the response to the motor neurons, to the effectors, um, that's going to take place through uh, the motor neurons coming out of the spinal cord. Uh, this is just another diagram kind of indicating the same thing. Reflex arcs are pretty important. So you have a receptor detecting that something's taken place that sends the information along the sensory neuron to the interneuron or association neuron, potato, potato, um, that then interprets the signal and sends it down the motor neuron to the effector, which again is typically a muscle. So I really love this diagram um, because it's showing multiple different examples of reflex arcs. For instance, this one up here is when the doctor tries to stimulate your um, reflex in your quadricep muscle by using the, the, the patellar tendon. Um, by hitting the patellar tendon, it's going to cause the leg to move. Um, and so you can see the effect, the effector right here of the, the leg jerking out. Um, this one shows, this uh, right side shows the, the pin being stuck into the finger uh, or hand and then the effector, the arm muscles going, whoa, that hurts, pull it out. That's what she said. And you're welcome. I hope this was informative and I'll see you again when we talk about the action potentials, the function of neurons.